Hey there and welcome back. We're on element two. That's the technician exam. If these have been helpful, go ahead and hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channels to show your support. So let's go ahead and get started about talking about antennas. And the first question is what is a beam antenna? An antenna that concentrates signals in one direction. And I happen to have you saw this in the last video, but this is a two element or a two meter four element beam that I'm using for fox hunting. And there are all kinds of beams for every type of frequency you can imagine from small to large. So that is what a beam antenna, uh, also we call them Yagi antenna sometimes, that's a beam antenna. Which of the following describes a type of antenna loading? The correct answer is electrically lengthening by inserting inductors in radiating elements. And I happen to have one in my hand right now. I'm going to do my best to show you this, but this is called the new super antenna. It's just one of many types, but it has a whip at the top that extends, but you can change the frequency by sliding this down, which would bring, this is an 80 meter coil below it. And so this I can help tune in the 80 meter band. Without this, I can go from 10 meters all the way to 40 meters by extending this out. I can even take this off and just use the whip itself on the mount and do two meters and six meters. So we'll put that away. The next question, which of the following describes a simple dipole oriented parallel to Earth's surface? And that is a horizontally polarized antenna because it's on the horizon. I have an image of a vertically polarized antenna. And so if we go to this particular and then we take that one away. This is a two meter vertical antenna, but it could also be horizontal if you just turn it sideways. It's vertically polarized right now. If you were to rotate that 90 degrees, then it would be a horizontal dipole. And that is just for two meters. I made that for uh, a subscriber and local ham here in town. What is the disadvantage of the short, flexible antenna supplied with most handheld radio transceivers compared to a full-size quarter-wave antenna? Well, these rubber duckies are not efficient. This one's a little more efficient. It's a diamond antenna, but it has a low efficiency compared to that quarter-wave antenna. And that one is actually, this one is not too far from a quarter wave, but a quarter wave would be even better. But those little rubber duckies have low efficiency. Which of the following increases the resonant frequency of a dipole antenna? So if you'll think of it like this, the longer the antenna, the longer the wavelength. The longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency. So if you shorten your antenna, you're raising or increasing that resonant frequency. Which of the following types of antenna offers the greatest gain? Well, that's the Yagi antenna. And we'll go back to the fox hunting ARDF. This enables us to look for low power transmitters. This increases the signal into our radio so that we can go find them. And as we get closer, then we can use the attenuator to turn that back down. And then we can find the, we can pinpoint it, do some triangulation and pinpoint it. What is a disadvantage of using a handheld VHF transceiver with a flexible antenna inside a vehicle? This guy 
as great as this antenna is, if I'm inside a vehicle, it is not going to get out as much because of what's called a Faraday cage. A vehicle's body acts like a Faraday cage. So signal strength is reduced due to the shielding effect of the vehicle. Now my Jeep Wrangler is not nearly as bad as my wife's Ford F-150 that's almost all metal. My Jeep is mostly plastic from the doors up, so it's not as bad. Okay, now I'm going to show you a little bit of math. You can just memorize these two answers fairly easily, but if you get into building antennas, you're going to want to know a couple of formulas. The first formula is going to be 300 divided by the frequency in megahertz, and I'm going to show you what that's going to do. You know what the meters is for 146 megahertz, right? That falls into the two meter band. So if you do 300 divided by 146, notice that my answer comes out to about two meters. So this is asking you, what is the approximate length in inches of a quarter wave length vertical antenna? for two meters or 146 megahertz. Well, since this is full wave, two meters, that's from peak to peak, it's asking for a quarter. So you divide that by four, that's a quarter. But now we're still in meters. So to convert meters to, to feet and then to inches, you multiply times 3.3 .3, and then you multiply again times 12 to get those in inches. And notice that the answer is at 20 inches, 20.3. 20 it's actually a little closer to 19 inches. And so that antenna that I showed you earlier with the, um, the two meter vertical or horizontal antenna, it wound up being, this is a half wave. So each section is a quarter wave length long, so they're right at about 19 inches. Let's do one more. This one is a different formula. You won't need to use the, the 300 divided by the frequency in megahertz. This one tells you it's a 6 meter dipole, so there's two poles, 6 meter dipole antenna. It's going to be a half wavelength. So it's asking you in inches, we need to convert from meters to inches. So you have six meters and it's a half wavelength. So you divide by two. Now we're stuck with three meters. And now you're going to multiply times 3.3 .3 feet. That's going to convert meters to feet. And then you multiply again times inches. And you notice you get about 118.8. So your nearest choice from these choices is 112. And that would depend on where you wound up in the six meter band. So that's a way if you want to know, you know, this is just two, antenna two antennas. Knowing how to use these formulas, you can make any antenna you want to at any frequency. In which direction does a half-wave dipole antenna radiate the strongest signal? Now that is going to be broadside to the antenna. Broadside meaning if your antenna is set up like this, then this, let's, look, let's show you this way, this is broadside this way. Your strongest is going to be to this side and weakest off the ends. What is antenna gain? Antenna gain is the increase in signal strength in a specified direction compared to a reference antenna. A lot of times the reference antenna would be an isotropic or imaginary antenna that radiates the same in all directions. And you'll see those signal strengths usually expressed in dBi, which is decibels, in relation to an isotropic antenna. So antenna gain is increasing the signal strength in a specific or specified direction compared to a reference antenna.
What is an advantage of a 5 8 wavelength WIP antenna for VHF or UHF mobile service? Now you have to go look at the choices for this and it has more gain than a quarter wavelength. It radiates at a very high angle. It eliminates distortion caused by reflected signals. It has 10 times the power gain of a quarter. Boy, don't we wish. But it has more gain than a quarter wavelength. So a quarter wavelength, let's imagine that this is folded down and is only a quarter of the wavelength. So the five eighths of a wavelength has, it's, it, you know, imagine breaking off just a little bit of this. A five eighths wavelength just tends to have a little more gain than a quarter wavelength antenna. Five eighths is the way to go when you're making a whip antenna. Alrighty, so we've made it to the end of element two, sub element nine alpha. And we will go to 9 Bravo next. Thanks so much. And 73.